All right, so I am uh, working on a hidden stereo solution for another one of my classic cars. I just got a 1972 BMW 2002 TII, and I need to put a, a hidden stereo in it. I'm gonna put this in the glove box. I have a similar hidden stereo in my 1976 BMW 2002. Um, unfortunately, and I love the one that's in my 76, but unfortunately you can't buy that one anymore. So I've been searching around and I found something similar. So this is the one that I am going to be installing. It's only about $70. It's a full Bluetooth amp. Um, the only downside is it does not have radio. I do like to have radio, but unfortunately I couldn't find a fully hidden stereo um, uh, the way I wanted it for with a radio. So we're going to go with Bluetooth only. Um, this is the device. I have not yet messed with it. The size, size is good. This will fit in the glove box with ease. Um, the cool thing about this is is the remote control. This remote control looks like you know almost it looks like kind of like a wired panel mount remote control, but it's actually. Um, it's completely wireless and it's actually USB rechargeable. Um, I think it unclips here. If I can figure out how to unclip it. Let me figure out how to unclip it here. Okay, I think I got it. So this is actually just a panel mount that you can use or not use. He has the remote control and yes, you can see it's actually a USB type C rechargeable. So I probably won't mount the, mount the remote. I'll probably just leave this in my, in my cup holder or, or on my dash for when I need to turn on the radio or use it. Um, but this is cool. I, you know, I, to me, having a wireless remote control is really important for these hidden systems since um, the whole point of hiding them is to not not have to deal with wiring it to the dash or, or to... Um, you know, uh, you know, so I don't want to have to put a wired remote into the into the dash or into the center console. I just want something that I tuck away and a wireless remote is perfect. So this is cool. Um, I'm actually going to plug this on USB and then we'll keep looking at this. OK, so I put the remote on the charger. OK, so this is a uh, USB input so you can play music and stuff off a flash drive. These are uh, not sure what these inputs are, and here's your wiring harness. Uh, these might just be RC. These might just be RCA inputs. Um, let me see here. Okay, they are just uh, they are just RCA inputs from like an iPhone. If you want a, a like an AUX input, that's what that's what these are for, um, which I won't use. Um, here's your wiring harness. Let's see what we we need here. It is four channels, so. Eight of these wires will just be for the speakers. Um, and then there's probably, uh, yeah, 12 volt in. Uh, that's, your, that's your 12 volt negative. That should just be, you know, that should just say ground, weirdly labeled. Um, and let's see here. The rest of these may just be all speaker wires. Two, two, to, there's a couple extra wires here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. So the pink is actually just an antenna wire for the Bluetooth. It says do not cut. So you leave the pink this length because it's just acting like an antenna. Um, uh, black is your ground. Yep, black ground, pink and blue are pink and blue are both pink and blue are both sort of remote control receivers. Um, and then the rest of these are your speaker wires. Um, so I'm gonna actually hook this up on my workbench here and do a quick test um, before I install this in the car, so we can see what we're dealing with. Um, I've actually let me show, I've actually just been in the middle of building a uh, rear parcel shelf for the BMW. The BMW has no 
has no speaker cutouts on the rear parcel shelf and I don't want to cut the metal to put in speaker cutouts so I'm using these pods um, they're okay um, I got a couple pioneers in there um, it'll it should be work fine I'm still unsure if I like the look of these pods but uh, I'm sure they're once they're in the car behind the back seat it'll look fine but anyways so we can use this for testing this uh, this um, testing this hidden stereo so let me wire this up I'll, I'll use my bench power supply to give it 12 volts and we'll see what happens okay this is hooked up to my bench power supply giving it uh, 12 volts it's uh, taking 30 uh, uh, milliamps right now so it's basically in standby mode right now taking nothing um, so let's um, uh, so it's funny since it is pulling 30 milliamps I will give the switched power in the car I won't give this constant 12 volts since it does have a small phantom draw best to give it switch power that way it doesn't draw when the ignition's off anyways it's up let's um, let's uh, turn on the remote control and see what happens so this is the remote this source button I think is also the uh, the power um, so I'm gonna hold it down Remote control paired. Bluetooth mode. Okay, you heard that. Um, very, uh, it's got a Chinese accent and apparently it does talk to you, so that's interesting. But um, I guess we're in, uh, I guess we're in Bluetooth mode. Let me press the source button again. Audio in mode. Couldn't understand what she said. Bluetooth mode. Okay, so it's just between Bluetooth mode and maybe auxiliary mode. Let me try that again. Audio in mode. Hmm. Can't quite understand what she's saying, but that's probably the auxiliary mode. Um, Bluetooth mode. Okay, we're back in Bluetooth mode. Um, so let me uh, get my spare phone here. And we'll try and pair it here. Uh, LM402. LM Bluetooth connected. Okay, we are connected now. So, let us uh, get some copy-free YouTube music here. Okay, I got some uh, copyright YouTube music here. So, I'm going to press play. Okay, and it's playing. And we can control the audio here. We can also control the audio here. Volume. So we've maxed out the volume there, but then we still have the. We can still take it up here. Let me pause that. So I can tell you that uh, on the meter there, we're drawing up to about two amps. Uh, not too bad. It, it's about half an amp for for um, regular you know, regular parts of the song, but when the beat hits, it jumped up to uh, close to two amps. Um, but this is only two speakers. Once we add a second set of speakers, uh, that'll probably double the output to close to four amps. But still, four amps is nothing. That doesn't take any special wiring to drive four amps. Um, you know, should be uh, easy to install. Should be able to pretty much tap any circuit for four amps. Um, not a problem. Um, so, uh, I mean, it, it seems to work. I like this little wireless remote. Um, let's see what happens when we turn it off. Hello. Okay, so besides the horrible Chinese English uh, speaker, um, it works exactly as I hoped. It's nice and compact. It'll fit in the glove box. I have this little remote control that I can just, you know, every few months throw on the charger for a minute to charge it up. And then when I want music. Remote control paired. Bluetooth. Bluetooth connected. There we go. Good to go. Let me press play. Yep, and it resumes playing right away. This does support full streaming, so all the pausing, fast forwarding, and all that does work with like iHeartRadio and Spotify and stuff like that. Um, it actually has a whole section on uh, on the streaming music. Um, so besides missing a radio, 
Um, let me pause it. Besides missing a radio, um, this is a really nice compact way to just get some audio in a classic car. Like I said, I think it was about 70 bucks. And uh, it's hard to beat for 70 bucks. Um, you know, if you try and put like a classic looking radio in your car that's got modern Bluetooth built inside of it, those will run you three, four hundred dollars. Here we have a, a, you know, decent amplifier with the Bluetooth, four channels, and it's 70 bucks. Um, total output on this thing I think is uh, 200, and, yeah, 200 watts. Um, which is plenty of output. Um, I mean, those speakers are only rated at, rated at 35 watts each, so this can drive more than those speakers can even take. So um, that's that's good to go. So yeah, I think I'll use this, and I think this will be uh, a nice addition to the car.